All right, fortunately, the issues with the server have been resolved, so I can demonstrate the, at least they were as of 2 o'clock today, <laughs> you know, but I hope I can show you um, what it is, um, show, the, show you these uh, programs in action, and then talk a little bit about uploading stuff to the server and testing it out in your lab 7 which I didn't put any description in <laughs> at first. I guess that was a lesson to show you that sometimes you don't get all the requirements and you have to guess. Um, but I have put the, 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 uh, the uh, information up there. So let's take a look. First we'll take a look at these things in action and then we will go and look at the code. Again, remember that the issue is, because we are on an internal network here, that the web server doesn't know where I am. So if I access this sample, it actually gives me an error. And Interestingly enough, it gives me some things in the Cleveland area, which is weird. Even though it doesn't know what country we're in, what region, and so on. That's, that's weird. I'm not really sure why that is. But it doesn't have the latitude, it doesn't have the longitude, and so on. That's because we're on a network, a local network. We're not going through an internet service provider, so we, therefore we don't have a real IP address. Real as in the kind of, that our folks would have. Let's go and let's view this through a proxy server. So let me go out and search for proxy server. And we'll look for one in Chicago. want us to pay. Forgot to put the magic word in.
C. Try this one, and we can go in and put in our URL, and it will tell you that it is wherever this is located. This is in Provo, Utah. Okay. This one is a French one, and it will tell you that it is somewhere in France, and it converts dollars into whatever the local currency is there. So all of this is based on that geo, uh, that, that, that geo plug-in. Um, This is this is the one I think I wanted. It's gonna give me that. It's gonna try to pop me up that. I can go right to it. Alright, here we go. And as you notice that this one will tell me that I am in beautiful Chicago, Illinois. Alright. Let's look at the code for this again, just to review. I believe I posted it to Angel last time. code we're looking at is sample, and if we edit PHP, you'll see essentially all it does is it uses this include file, which you can download from the geo plugin site. It creates a geo plugin object. It tells the geo plugin to go and locate you, locate the client that is, and then it outputs a whole bunch of stuff. All right, so it outputs the IP address, the city, the region, which is the state, the area code, country name, and all that. Then it shows um, if, you know, it does a conversion for you for whatever currency that you, that you have. So in the case of the French site, it, did, it converted the $100 into euros. So really, what do we need to know about this? for your assignment. And your assignment is to make something using server-side code that is um, location dependent. And in order to do that, you're going to need to test with a proxy server, obviously, unless you feel like driving around the country to, to test it. But you're going to need to test a, a proxy server. 
You definitely need this, which you can download. All right? Require once is like an include file. Difference between require and include is that with a require, you'll get a different kind of error if it's missing. If you do an include and it's not there, you get a warning. If you do a require and it's not there, you get a fatal error. Require once simply says that it will ignore if you have the same include file included more than one time. So you only, you only need one copy of it. So if you happen to have nested include files, it will only load one. So you need the include file. You need this to create your geo plugin object. You don't have to call your object geo plugin. You don't have to call this variable geo plugin. Remember, PHP variables start with a question mark. Also, you don't declare them as anything. You simply start using them. But that creates your pipeline to the geolocation service. That is your geolocation object. <clears throat> you then can call the locate function. As a reminder, this is the notation in PHP that says call the locate function on the object geo plugin. So in many other, most other programming languages, you use a dot there. Like if we were doing this in um, C Sharp, or if we were doing this in Java, or we were doing this in JavaScript. Typically it's object name dot function name. Here it's object name, arrow function name. What that function does then is it loads up all these variables. And then you can use those variables for whatever you want. You can include them, for example, in if statements to um, show different code if they're in one location versus another. So let's look at a couple of the examples that we had here. Let's look at the sporting example, which if you run it through our network here, it returns just a generic basketball and a link for the NBA. If, however, I run it from Chicago through their proxy server, we get the Chicago Bulls logo and a link to the Chicago Bulls site. So there's dynamic content. <clears throat> Remember, what do I mean when I say there's dynamic content? I mean that the content is determined at runtime. It's not going to be the same for every person. The server's going to do some processing and look at different stuff to determine exactly what the output, exactly what the web page being sent to the server, or to the client rather, is going to be. And in this case, the page being sent to the client it includes the Chicago Bulls logo as a background, and it contains, instead of the generic Chicago or the NBA link, it contains a link to the Chicago Bulls. We also have a <coughs> link for Atlanta. Let's see if we can find an Atlanta proxy. If I put that same link in, I get the Atlanta Hawks logo and a link to the Atlanta Hawks. So this one page, sporting.php, looks at the location of the user and, and uses that location to determine what output to send back to the client. Now this in particular isn't necessarily 
this is moving in the direction of mobile web development. All right, because this could benefit even a desktop site. Even if you're doing a desktop Google site, it's good to have, or a desktop site, it's good to have your Google results customized to the location you are. But this does take into account location, so it's moving into the realm of, of serving us well when it comes to mobile uh, websites. Let's look at this code. All right, same thing. The first three lines are the same thing. We include that include file. We require it once. We create our geo plugin object. And then we go and we say to locate. That, that says go and fill up all the variables in that geo plugin object so that I can use them. Now, in this case, I'm not interested in currency. You know, it does return currency, if you remember. One of the fields was currency. So we could use that to show prices in one currency versus another. That would be one use of location. All right. But instead, we use that in our PHP code to set some variables. If the region is GA, we set the image, the link, and the name to stuff relating to the Atlanta Hawks. If the region is Illinois, we set the image, the link, and the name to Chicago Bulls. And then, if it's none of those two, we get the defaults, which is just a generic MBA link. What I do then is, I have my I create my style, and right in the middle of the style tag, I set the background image to be the image that's contained in the variable. So I will get one of three images here. I will either get the generic image if it's not specifically in Illinois or Georgia, or I will get the Atlanta Hawks image if the location is in Georgia, or I will get the Chicago Bulls image if the location is Illinois. Again, this is dynamic. It's a mix of plain old HTML and CSS with a piece of it getting filled in by the web server. So we're filling in the image name that we want to use here based on these if statements above. Then lastly, we create our link, which is linked to the proper page. And the, link, the, the text of the link is the name of the team. Now notice how this can get really confusing, but we're popping in and out of PHP mode right and left here. Remember, the stuff that's not included in from here to there the stuff included in there is PHP code. The stuff outside of that is HTML. So if you want to look at this, we have a regular plain old HTML link, ahref equals, but it's not a link that's going to be static. Everyone is not going to get the same link. Different people are going to get the different link. Where are we getting that link from? We're filling it in from the link variable, where we set up here. All right, and we're putting that variable, we're printing it out, which means send to the client, exactly where it would print it out if we were hard coding it. That is right between the starting and ending quote. Then we have the ending quote, and then we have the greater than side to, to add the start tag for the link. Finally, we have the PHP to print the name of the team. All right, so that the text of the link becomes the name of the team. So this is one way that we can go to make our page location sensitive. All right, this page, the link and the appearance of it depends on where they're located. I have another example here of the news 
which again, if I go and run it from our server, it's probably going to give me some sort of error. It does because it can't find the location. But if I run it through the Chicago and Atlanta proxy server, it'll give me the local news for Atlanta, news for Atlanta. And if I run it through the Chicago proxy server, it'll return the news for Chicago. Maybe. There we go. I don't know what that window was. But here we have the same page, the page that I wrote, that pulls the news for Chicago or the news from Atlanta. How does it know that? Well, that's where it thinks this is because we've gone through a proxy server. If we go through another proxy server, picked us off of Germany and we put in our for Amsterdam. Okay. So let's look at this. This actually uses two tools in doing this. It uses one tool to find out where the client is or where the proxy server is, where the server thinks, where our web server thinks the client is. Then it uses a second service to pull the news stories for that location. So let's look at that, the news. Should be familiar by now. We require the geo plugin, we create our geo plugin object, and we locate. I then look and I found that there's a plugin that was created to get news for a particular search term. All right? And what I did is I made the search term the city that the geo plugin pulls. So, I create my search term, I echo or display news for whatever my search term is, I call this 
PIPHP get Yahoo news search, and I pass it the search term that I'm looking for, and what it does is it runs out to a URL and grabs an XML file that contains the search results. And it does some substitution, and it essentially it returns an array that contains a list of the stories. I then run a loop through and loop through the stories and output a link to the story, the title of the story, and sort of the summary for the story. That's what the echo means. So, all of these start the same way. All of these start for having to figure out where the server thinks a client is at. And this GL plugin does that. Could you write something to do weather? Yes. All right. Could you write a map that would show the user where they are? I'm not sure why that would be important. I would think most users would know where they are, but you could do that. All right. All of it would start with this. The plugin, creating the object, and calling the locate method. What you do from there is up to you. Whether you write the code or you use another service, remember what you have at your disposal is All of these things, the latitude and longitude, all right? It's real easy to create a map in Google Maps that shows you where your IP address lives by simply supplying the latitude and longitude. You get the exchange rate, so you can, you can exchange whatever currency um, you have. You can pick any sort of functionality as long as it's location dependent. All right, as long as it depends on there. When you do this, I want you to give me the proxies that you use to test this so that I can go in and test it under similar conditions. So if you make a page that converts currency, let's say, and you do it for Canada and Mexico, give me the URLs of the proxies for Canada and Mexico so I can go and test it and make sure that it works okay for you. Now, in order for this to work, it needs to be out on a web server that's actually on the internet. So your local server won't do. All right? I've created on this CIS SQL web server a account for each of you, and I emailed you today your user ID and password. So if you look in your email, you should see that. What I want to talk about now is FTPing stuff up there. FTPing is, FTP stands for File Transfer Protocol. And is, it is what allows you to transfer files from your local machine to a machine that's located wherever. Now, one thing to keep in mind, while you're testing this stuff, you might go in and hard code certain values. All right? You might go and hard code that the city is Chicago, just to test that logic out. Or hard code that the region is, or the country code is France or Germany or whatever. So you can do that to test things out by going in and setting the code. All right? Hard code it. And then you can test it out, but remember to take that out and let the actual geolocation work when you actually go and test it. All right? Let's talk about FTPing to the server. All right? So let's say I have these files and I want to put them up on the server. All right? You can use FileZilla, you can use um, simply Windows Explorer, you can use really anything that you want to 
to do that. The host will be cissql.lorraineccc.edu. The username will be the username that you will see in your email. The password will be the password that you see in your email. You then click connect. I don't want to remember passwords. All right. Now, what you have is you have your local machine over in this window over here, and you have the remote site over there. Now, you're only given permission to work in certain folders. So you have to navigate to your folder before you can put any files up here. You can see the other files, but you can't upload anything to those folders. So, what you want to do is you want to get into the CISS 268 folder. Underneath the CISS 268 folder, you'll see a folder for your username. So, Sam, this would be yours. Sam S. And you can double click it and you can go into it. What you can do then is you can go in and transfer files over. So I could go and select these files, these files through there, right mouse, and say upload. And what that will do is that will put it in your server space. If you try to put it in a folder other than your server space, you're going to get an error because you don't have permission to write to there. So you need to go to your folder, which is in CISS 268 and then your username. Now, how do you access this? You can access this by doing sort of the reverse. I can put in CIS SQL. CISS 268 and then I can put put or then you can put your username and there you see a list of all of them you can click on it and it goes and runs that code that's out there there's the image here's a sporting example and so far I'm going to go and delete all these. That takes them out of the server. Remember, this is the server that you're FTPing to. This is your local machine. And you can simply click on it and say to upload it, and it will upload it to whatever folder you're in. You have to be in your folder to make this work. So, let's talk about if I were you, what I'd do. Okay? If I were you, what I would do is first off, I would go in and I would upload one of the PHP things that I've done already up to my server space just to make sure that I understand the process of FTPing and, and getting the files over. So it doesn't have to be lab 7, lab 6, or lab 5, they, those, those use PHP. So upload those to, the, to your server space and access them and make sure that it works. And make sure that you can upload them, make sure that you can view them in the web browser after you've uploaded them. All right. When you've gotten that done, you need a copy of the Geo plugin. You need to look at my examples of how to call the locate method on the Geo plugin. And then think of some sort of code that you can have that is going to customize a page based on location. So using one of the attributes that's included in that Geo plugin object. And if you want to see what attributes are included in that Geo plugin attribute, if you look at that sample.php you'll be able to see that stuff. All right? Use that to, as sort of a starting point, and then work on customizing your page. 
Remember, you can look for PHP plugins to do weather, to do news. You could write your own sort of custom thing um, like I did that used if statements that checked the location and did different things. Really, the only thing I need for you is the code and a list of which proxies you tested it on or what, what the proxy settings need to be for me to, to test this and get the same results. Yes? Do we have enough um, server space to like, keep the rest of the semesters by the Oh, yeah. Or do we have to like, delete them later? No, you should, you should have them. So you can make like a folder for each assignment okay. and, and put them in there. That's, that's what I would recommend doing. But yeah, no, I, don't, I don't know if there's any sort of requirement or not requirement limit. I just didn't know if you like a lot of those. So much yeah, no. Week or, no, okay. you, you should be you should be okay for that. Now, here's a couple of quirks for this. If you are on campus and you are using a laptop, a wireless laptop, you cannot FTP to that server. Don't ask me why. You can. All right, it's a security thing. They have it set up only to accept certain ports through the, and so on. If you're at home and you're using your laptop and you're not going through LC's network, then you can FTP to this server in just the way I did here. So if you are working on a laptop, you will need to copy it. If you are working on a laptop here, you'll need to copy your stuff to a machine in the lab that's wired to the network, and then you can FTP it up to the server. So that's one sort of catch. What I'd like to do the rest of the day today is um, give you some opportunity to practice uploading stuff to the server, make sure that you can upload it, and make sure that you can find it once that you have uploaded it. Uh, I'm debating what to do Wednesday because of the confusion and because of the issue that we had and because of the fact that I didn't put any description for the assignment, all right, I might have Wednesday as a work day to work on that location. That might be a good thing for us just to collaborate on in case you're not having any good ideas on how to do that. We could maybe even do bits of it together, all right? So that's probably what I will do on Wednesday. So um, we'll meet up here, but we might go down the lab quickly, all right? So the rest of class today, I want you to work on making sure that you know, for the rest of the lecture period, so from now to 6.30 or 6.20 or whatever it is, I want you to make sure that you understand how to FTP something up to the server and access it. From there, after that, at 6.30, you can start working on your normal lab stuff. And Wednesday, we'll meet up in here, but it will probably be a... Um, free lab session to work on that, and we can discuss some of the things that you can do. All right, see you down in lab.